How's it going everyone? Welcome to Keep It Classy Tech. In this video I'm going to be reviewing the Sony X95K at 75 inches. And I can warn you now, it's not going to be an overwhelmingly positive review, so if you're looking for that, sorry, but you're not going to get it here. I'm going to be straight out honest with you about this. The TV is priced incorrectly for what it offers. It's not a bad TV. It doesn't look terrible. It's just at the price point, which at the time of making this video, it's $3,800 for the 75 inch, and at nearly $4,000, it has no right being in that price range. So I'm going to start off going through the unboxing and setup of the TV, and then talk a little bit about some measurements and how it calibrates, and then we'll move into some of its main glaring issues for the price range, uh, and then also talk about what it does well. Alright, so the TV comes in a very large, just plain brown box. Uh, and I say very large because this TV has an ongoing theme of large and heavy. Alright, so real quick too, I just want to show how easy it is to pull these straps off without having to cut them. You just flip them over, peel them down, and snap them. Alright, so popping the top open, you see the legs, a couple panel pieces, your bag with the remote papers. Pull that up and then you start seeing tons and tons of cardboard. Like there is just cardboard everywhere. So good thing because it's packed well uh, but it does add a lot of weight so then there's a lot more little panel pieces at the bottom and there's not one but two full pieces of cardboard covering the front all right so to get the feet on easily you can just flip those little triangle pieces at the bottom over and then fold down the cardboard pull out the excess foam and then you can slot the feet in very easily while it stands up in the foam and there's multiple positions for the feet so you got three of the HDMI ports facing down, one to the side, along with your USB ports. And then here's how it handles reflections, which I'm not a fan of that type of coating. Uh, and then there's just a strip going around the bezel. But I don't like that reflection coating because it makes like rainbows go across the screen and it's just more distracting to me. The new remote is pretty nice, however there's no number buttons anymore. Um, and then here it is set up next to my 83 G2. And you can see it's not bad looking. It's a little low on contrast, but it's not bad. Uh, and I'm going to show a pixel shot, which shows that it is a BGR, or blue, green, red VA panel. Here's the stats on the weight and size. With the box, it's 140 pounds. All right, so real quick, just going to touch on a few things here. 73% BT2020 coverage. Very easy to get a pretty flat calibration in HDR. With good accuracy overall, a little bit of a drop-off towards the upper end of EOTF. And then an SDR, colors came in line pretty nicely, just a little bit of oversaturation at the farthest ends. And then as far as brightness numbers, looking at around 16 to 1700 nits in a 10% window after calibration, and around 1500 nits in as low as a 1% window, and around 600 or so uh, full screen. So. On paper, on measurements, this TV should be knocking it out of the park. But I think this is a prime example of where measurements and numbers only show part of the picture and not the actual picture because this TV does have some issues in content that don't represent uh, a great looking image and most of it has to do with contrast. Yes, there's blooming, that's expected. All local dimming LCDs are going to have some blooming. That's not its biggest problems. It's just overall general scene contrast. Right there, those lines you saw, that's nothing with the TV. That's just this TV has a very... Uh, it's the first TV I've seen and struggled with this much to get rid of those lines with the shutter speed of the camera. So you don't have to worry about that. That's just an effect of the camera. I tried a bunch of different shutter speeds, even with variable shutter, and it just couldn't eliminate them entirely, and it would change scene to scene. And uh, please ignore my voice. I'm still a little bit ill. All right. Uh, so the setup process has changed a little bit. You saw there where they actually added the eco mode into the setup process. That I do like, because it won't force it on and then you not know that it's on. So it is a step in the setup process. That's really how it should be. Uh, and of course, I would definitely recommend turning it off. All right, and then as with the other Sony TVs, when you register, you can get some movie tokens for the Bravia Core app, as well as a uh, one-year membership to it to have access to other movies. 
The Samba TV is just its way of trying to learn what you like and then make recommendations. I don't use that, uh, but I went ahead and accepted everything else. And when you're setting up a Google TV and installing apps, it does take quite a while. Uh, I find having it wired does go a little bit faster, even if you are near a fast wireless router. Alright, so that's the initial setup process. Once it's done, you're going to be greeted to the main home page. Now, I personally like Google TV. Uh, one thing you really want to do with the Sony TVs is go into your external inputs and change these to enhanced, and then enhance Dolby Vision on ports where you want Dolby Vision if it's 3 or 4. 1 and 2, you can just put it on enhanced and you'll have Dolby Vision. But now let's get into picture quality here. Uh, this is the kind of scene that the TV really suffers. So I turned up the exposure a little bit so you could see right there how much glowing there is along the top of that image and how it leaks into the black bars. The black bars is probably the main issue is that they let the black bars lift a lot um, and it's very noticeable in order to preserve all detail near the black bars. It's just the way Sony does it. And then even a scene like this, um, I don't even have to change the camera. You can see the lifting of the bars in the corners. However, real quick, I do want to point out, panning motion is great. Like, this is definitely a fantastic TV for motion. All the motion settings are turned off. Um, now, you come into some 16x9 content that fills the whole screen, and it's bright, and it's colorful. This is where the TV does well. Um, there's very little to complain about. You know, I'm not going to expect this TV to have OLED level contrast, um, and of course it doesn't, but general scenes like this look great. Like, there's really not much to complain about. Now, the TV also, like I said, gets very bright. Um, it's capable of getting upwards of 1,700 nits. Most content is going to be 1,000 nits or less, so you don't really see that unless you use... Uh, different settings on the TV to make it brighter than it should be, or if you're watching content that's graded higher. All right, I'm going to briefly touch on audio as we move into gaming. If you have a soundbar or external speakers, use them. Nights are hard out here. Mission comes first, but I could go for my bed right now. Watch yourself. Vandal snipers in the area. The speakers definitely have a very hollow and tinny sound to them and are not very good. Alright, so now gaming. Gaming is a real problem here because right now VRR is off so that local dimming can be on. However, in game mode with local dimming on, it does not perform as well as it does outside of game mode. And they do that to reduce input latency. Um, however, as soon as you get into dark areas, the image just really falls apart. So um, you've probably just saw as I went into that darker area, some blooming around the HUD elements and the weapon. Uh, here, I use that tree with the bright background to check for inverse ghosting, which I did not see, so there's no glowing ghosting. It's just a little bit of regular trail ghosting. And then as I come in this dark cave, you could see the glowing around the gun, though, from the blooming, and then down in the bottom left around that menu, how it's glowing. And now what I'm going to do is go in the menu and turn off the local dimming to simulate if this was with the VRR setting turned on because when you turn on VRR, you don't get local dimming, and that's how it would look. And that's not camera trickery, that is liter literally how it looks. And, you know, that glowing purplish blue, like, you see that even when local dimming is on from time to time in certain areas, um, especially in gaming, like, even if you put local dimming on high. Um, and that's just one of the other big issues for me with this TV, is when it does that, it just gives that cheap LCD look. And that's why at the beginning of this video I said at nearly $4,000, this TV should not cost that. Some scenes look fine, and other scenes look really bright and nice. And then the big problem is a lot of scenes lack contrast, and pretty much most dark scenes just don't look good, like especially if there's black bars. This scene right here with the horses in the snow, very bright, like very, very bright, like it's got really good full screen brightness. But that's kind of like it's one-hit wonder. That's the one thing that it seems to do better than some other TVs in its price range. The problem is just about every other scene, a good OLED or the Q190B will beat it. The Q190B is the main threat to this TV. It's its main competitor, and the Q190B is cheaper, 
has better control near black, better blooming control, better black bars, better color. It may not be as accurate and measure accurately and on paper may not be as good, but in reality, the contrast, which is the most important aspect to picture quality, the QN90B has better contrast and that's where it separates. So the X95K just kind of puts itself up against TVs that it just can't compete with based on price. If this TV was substantially cheaper than it is, then we would be having a different conversation because the TV is generally fine with a few shortcomings here and there, but those shortcomings in this price range should not exist. And also, I'm going to point out that I'm not disappointed because it's pretty much doing what I expected. Um, I expected Sony to focus on the brightness of it um, and not so much near black because that's just what they traditionally do. So it's not really a surprise. It's not unexpected for me. Um, I will say the only thing that was kind of unexpected was just that general scene to scene contrast which isn't terrible um, it's certainly not going to be OLED level like I said but it doesn't even really come close to what I saw with the QN90B so Sony's main philosophy here is to show all detail regardless of the trade-off and that's fine some people like that in dark areas they're giving you all the shadow detail that you're supposed to see with the trade-off being you're gonna see some more blooming than other TVs and like right there, you can see that. Uh, so you get all the detail at the expense of some blooming and some raised blacks from here and there. Um, and then on the high end, you get all the detail in highlights generally up to a certain grade. I do find that 4000 nit content, uh, the TV can't handle well at all, whether it's in gradation preferred or brightness preferred, doesn't matter. Um, it can't resolve that detail in really bright areas and we'll just clip it. So there is some high-end clipping on higher graded content, but on 1000 nit content, you won't have any problems there as long as it's in gradation preferred. All right, so now if we talk a little bit about processing, uh, upscaling is pretty good. Gradation handling, that's another main strength for Sony. So that's good. Motion, as I said earlier, is very good kind of surprising thing was sharpness, clarity, and detail, even with reality creation on auto, was not that good. Uh, now, a lot of that is the fact that OLEDs have a native sharpness advantage over LCDs because of the per pixel control and the like pure glossy panel, um, but even that taken into account, uh, the like skin pores and hairlines uh, were just not as detailed as I would have wanted to see again especially at this price range so pretty much the question at this point is what can happen with this tv well there's two main things that can make it in a much better position one price drop definitely price drop like this price has got to come down and two firmware updates uh the foundation for the x95k is great like all the hardware everything i mean aside from being extremely heavy and thick and large and whatever but anyway um i got no problem with that as long as the image quality benefits from it and that's not what's happening right now uh so anyway um mini led there's uh, about 600 zones on the 75 inch like it's all there sony hopefully will be able to fine tune and release firmware update to help the local dimming and then bring the price down and then this could be a complete 180 of what we're talking about right now realistically though I'm not expecting miracles so keep expectations in check I think they could release an update to help the local dimming a little bit um, I don't expect a huge change maybe they can change it where it doesn't light up so many zones uh, close to where an object is that it's lighting up for. Um, that could help the black bars if they could do that. Um, that would be a really big help in combination with a good price drop. Um, but I'm not expecting a giant change in how this is going to look going forward. Uh, we'll see what happens. Gaming, I don't see that getting improved enough to want a game on this TV at all either. Um, that seems like a lost cause, so if you are even 
slightly bit more into gaming, um, I wouldn't want to play on this TV. Um, and I, I mean, like, if you're going to just play a game casually once every couple weeks or something, fine. Um, but if you're interested in gaming really at all, this is not the TV for you. Mostly this TV is going to be for a bright room without reflections hitting the screen directly. So if you just happen to have a lot of ambient light in the room, but nothing really hitting the screen to send those rainbows everywhere, um, that's mainly where this TV is going to be fine. Watching TV, um, you know, just general cable, news, stuff like that, sports, I'm sure are fine on it. Um, DSC did not seem to be an issue, at least on the panel that I had. Uh, you know, it's just dark room watching serious like movies, critical viewing at night. Uh, that is not a specialty of this TV. And that's pretty much going to end this review there now. Um, again, hopefully big price drops will come and help this TV out. So uh, thank you all for watching. Um, it's kind of disappointing the way this whole review turned out, but it is what it is. And, uh, you know, I'll catch you all in the next one. I hope you have a good one.